I kind of want to go back to dealing with the infidelity. Uh-huh. Um, you mentioned that men typically have a harder time when they're on the receiving end. Yes. Because they're not good with their words. They know they don't know how to put their feelings into words, do the work, X, Y, and Z, whatever. Um, what to outside of the words and ex- explaining how they're how they're feeling, what is the hardest thing? Oh, sorry. What is like the hardest thing that you see men trying to get over the hump? And like what's the hardest thing for women trying to get over the hump? Oh, excellent question. So I, I would say that um, the one, one of the big, biggest hurdle that men are having and are trying to work through is having the vocabulary to express themselves, right? Because a lot of 96% of the time, the way you start a conversation is exactly how I was going to end. So there's, there's a difference between saying you're selfish versus, hey, babe, lately I've been feeling neglected and unwanted. You're saying the same thing, but you need the right words and the feeling words because that's what your partner can identify. So if, so if I'm saying you never and you always, that's me attacking you, and you're automatically going to defend yourself. So what I have found is that a lot of men are learning the vocabulary and as well as the skill and the science needed to properly express themselves. Now, in return, there is a lot of work also being done on their female partners to learn how to listen. Right? But it's easier to listen when emotional words and feelings are being used in personal attacks. Mm -hmm. It is not the receiver's responsibility to try to decipher what you're trying to say. Me saying you're selfish, and I'm doing it from a space of love, and I'm criticizing you, and you're just supposed to to not take it personal, that's impossible. We really need to stop utilizing these concepts that are not realistic and start to look at human nature and the impact of what we're doing, right? Right? So it's very, it's very important to start a conversation properly to label your feelings so that your partner has a sense and a time to understand. But here's the step that everybody missed. If we're together, right, and I just told you that I've been feeling neglected, unwanted, and that's really hurting my confidence and security in the relationship, how should you respond to that? I think my question would be, would it... I think my question, no, Alan. I think my question would be like, what exactly am I doing to make you feel that way? That's excellent, but not the right answer. So when somebody express, express themselves to you and have a complaint, the first thing you do is summarize. What I heard you say is that lately you have not been feeling wanted and desired in this relationship. And my lack of presence and words of affirmation have made you feel neglected. First step. Second step is I'm going to validate you to make sure that you feel understood prior to responding to you. I can understand what it feels like to be neglected and unwanted. I could I could clearly see how that is detrimental to the relationship and how that would affect the way that you view yourself and exactly the way that you feel in this relationship in terms of safety and security. Uh, Mac, does that take some form of emotional maturity, some emotional intelligence? So, so, so I have one more step. I have never a, had I have that. I had a question for this. I have this. one more step. Like, so in, in, in real life. You never had kind of, yeah, you, you I, can I definitely say TV, Mac. Can do the final step? You can I mean, definitely do the final step. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so the third step is, do you feel understood? You asking me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, he's saying... After summarizing after and I validated, uh-huh. I'm going to actually, do you feel understood? Yeah. Because oh. I cannot respond until you felt heard. If not, I'm oh, going to share my perspective. Then you go go back and share your perspective. We're not going to get nowhere because nobody's feeling understood. Mm. Right? So being able to sit back and be disciplined enough to hear you, make sense of what you said, and validate that. And validation does not mean that you agree. Validation means I understand. Conflict does not apply to agreement because we can see the same thing, have the same experience, but have two different perspectives of it. So it's true for me because it's subjective to me. My feelings are true and they're right, and your feelings are true and they're right. So we're not debating who's right or wrong. So that's why the validation and the understanding is needed before we can even proceed 
to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So those are the three steps that most people are not aware of. And those are the three steps that requires the most discipline. Like I'll be in session and the couple like, and they're turning away and they're moving their body. I'm like, how does the discomfort feel? Like, I just want to say what I want to say. I'm like, cool, sit with it. It's not time for that. Because that's what you need to create a masterful relationship. Not a mediocre, a masterful relationship. Damn. I hope y'all gonna bullet point up. <laughs> on the, I hope on so the too. Because no, honestly, I was a lot of it. Like emotional what you regulation. <laughs> yeah, Matt, can you talk? Because that takes a lot of emotional regulation. Not even just the emotional intelligence, maturity to get to that point, but to be able to get to the point where because our natural reaction is to get into defense mode. It is a natural human reaction. What's your attack? Yeah, because you, when you're in a relationship, right, and your partner comes to you with something that is like, I'm dissatisfied or I'm angry or I'm upset, but right? That's not critical. It, but even, but, but even you, you, you get in the defensive. Defense. So, so how do you get your clients to get to the point where they can regulate some of those emotions? Okay, so I, I think that we're making, we're having a misconception of what defensiveness looks like. If I attack you, you're going to defend yourself. If I'm criticizing you, you're going to defend yourself. So me saying you're selfish, you don't care about us, you don't care about this family, it's going to force you to defend yourself because that's the human reaction to being criticized. But if I'm saying I feel neglected and undesired, I'm not attacking you. So your need to defend yourself is not as high as the previous statement. But still there, though. That's not necessarily Some true. of it is there, but not to the same degree that you feel like you want to tell me that I'm wrong. Wait, time out. Because every man is going to tell you, listen, we've been in relationships that we've went about this way. And even, even it got to a point in my personal life, previous relationship, where I was like, yo, you know what? How I try to speak to this person, they don't receive it. I called my best friend. I said, yo, you already know what's going on. You know the situation. You might be able to say things differently than me, right? And we can say things differently with no attacking, no you words. No direct words. Everything is going to be on my end. And it still can be taken as an attack. Don't tell me. Show me. So make, wait, make, wait, make so a what, statement right now. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, wait. Not me, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> so let's say if I said I felt neglected, I felt you didn't, or I felt I was not being heard yes. in the conversation that X, Y, and Z happened. And the first thing that always happens is so you're saying <laughs> yeah so you're saying i don't understand you correct and then and and what i'm trying to say is now with 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 what marie is saying is it's not emotional regulation on one side it's emotional regulation on both sides cuz i can do all the practice that i want i could use all the proper precautions precautionary words and, and vocabulary but if the person still deems it as an attack, and, and, and I'm not going to lie, I feel like I say a lot of things and people say a lot of things and women hear only one part of it and then turn it to a whole nother thing. And always my first question is, is that what you got from what I said? And then we try to un unpack the whole thing. So the emotional regulation is not always on the guy's side. And 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 the and I think that that's one thing that we have to be understood because in my notes that I've taken, <laughs> he was down there. Scrubbing. I heard a lot of things, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so, one of the key things that you said was feeling words, right? Yes, sir. And my issue with feeling words is usually, first of all, people know how I feel about the word feelings. You know, usually the feelings are derived basically a social construct of what you should feel or how you should take certain things that are being said. It's all a social construct, which then becomes a one-sided thing. Because now if I say X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be, one woman can deem it this way, one woman can deem it that way, and now I'm literally the person trying to figure out how do I speak to this person. And sometimes it doesn't matter how you speak to a person, whether or not, uh, I mean, doesn't matter how you speak to a person because whether or not whichever avenue you go, they cannot receive it the way that it needs to be received. Good point. Good point. And that's why it's called couples therapy, right? 
not only am I coaching you how to identify your feelings and how to express yourself, but I'm also instructing your partner on the proper way to respond, right? Because that's not natural to us, right? It's not natural. It's not natural hearing how my behaviors impacted you. I automatically want to say, no, that's not true, because from my perspective, it's not true. But we're not speaking of agreement, right? So a lot of couples tend to get stuck on the validation because they're, they're arguing agreement. So you're right. You can try your best and be the best communicator in the world, right? And label and do all of the steps that I said at first. But if your partner doesn't learn how to listen and how to respond, then it's not going to be effective. Hence the term couples therapy. All of the partners in the relationship must be present because the knowledge and the skill must be applied to everyone. And I say that, and I'm so glad you said that, so I say all of this and bring in full circle because one of the things that was mentioned was that men don't, um, and it's not verbatim, but mm-hmm. men have the hardest time, you know, being vocal with women. And uh, and I said this on a previous podcast, it's really not that. The real thing is we are vocal, but not in the way that they're able to digest it. To decipher. Yeah. Yeah. De- decipher, receive, and, you know, execute. And I feel like that's unfair because for a long time, we weren't able to understand women. In fact, I don't even think men understand women right now, right? So nobody understands each other. So I, when it comes to being able to communicate and receive it, and, and what was the word that you used instead of receive? Validate. No, no. Decipher. Decipher. Decipher was actually being said per person. So a lot of things that we go ahead and we try to run with narratives because we talk about you know averages. And there's so many variables that play along with these averages. And the biggest variable that plays along is just the simple fact that it's actually a miscommunication and, un- and the inability to decipher on both sides. And maybe, not me because I'm great, <laughs> people should start seeking therapy before they become a couple. 